is the Get Published Radio Show. And here's your host, Gerald Everett Jones, the guy who has the answers because, well, he's made all the mistakes himself. On today's show, our topic is books as audio dramas. Our special guests are our very own producer, Lori Marple of Runky Productions, and her business partner and significant other, Anthony Pereslet. Tony is better known to our radio audience as William Anthony, author of the young adult sci-fi adventure, I Am Fire and Air. Laurie and William, welcome to your studio. <laughs> Happy to be here, Gerald. Thank you. But then we're always mostly here. Likewise, I'm sure. And don't forget to mention that I'm usually the chief cook and bottle washer when Laurie's in the control room. Cheyenne and Tom and I want to find out how Runky produces audiobooks as well as radio shows and podcasts. And let's not forget about the Runky team anchor, our announcer and engineer, Bill Navarro, the guy with three hands and the platinum plated vocal cords. Bill's in the control room. Somebody has to steer this ship. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Give a shout in the earphones if you spot any icebergs. So, Lori, tell us about your other day job producing audiobooks. What we offer at Runky Productions is a one-stop shop. We create a comfortable atmosphere for our author or small press to create audiobooks. We make all the steps easy, whether it's making a straightforward audiobook or a sophisticated audio adventure. So do you think audiobooks are becoming more popular nowadays? I would say so. 73% of audiobook listeners are commuters, 33% listen while doing household chores, and 25% listen while exercising. Do you think an author should narrate her own book? Well, maybe if you're Rod Serling. I think that's a big decision for an author. If the author is comfortable reading at a microphone, which isn't really that easy to do, then fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Laura, you need a professional narrator, but how are you going to find them and audition them? There are companies that locate narrators for authors. We at Runkey offers that service. We have an established set of narrators and actors that we can call on. We can also issue a casting notice and assemble the talent or prepare a cast by networking. A lot of narrators nowadays seem to do their own audio engineering, uh, and some people decide to go with producing partners. Uh, do you have an opinion? Do you think it's better to go with one versus the other? As often said on this program, your book is your calling card, and you want it to be as perfect as possible. If an author has the technical capability, then by all means, do it yourself. If the author wants to focus on writing and not on the time-consuming recording process, then it's best to have the audiobook professionally prepared. Well, without getting too technical, could you tell us what is involved in ensuring the quality of an audiobook soundtrack? First, make sure you have a quality microphone. Second, a sound booth where you can isolate any background noise. Third, a editing system where you can control the levels and be able to play back to assess the final production values. Well, William, you know, the Runky team, as I understand it, did record your audiobook for I Am Fire and Air. And what did you learn about the process of uh, audio proofing from that experience? Well, if by proofing you mean evaluating the production values and quality of it, I'm going to have to be honest and say I had a professional producer and a professional engineer with a lot of experience. Well, but so, also the correctness, you know. Well, 99% of what they produced was acceptable. I simply let them do the work and I went on writing. What I would recommend for authors to do is to spend that little extra time in the audition process. Make sure that the person who's doing your narration or in the case of uh, an audio adventure doing all the, the character voices really contains the essence of that character. Is it what you really want to present on audio? Remember, this, as Lori said, this is your calling card. How good should that calling card be? And it's only going to be as good as the voices that people hear. But did you find that talent occasionally paraphrasing your words? Yes, and... So what did that's you do? <laughs> it's not necessarily a bad thing. You should probably, during the audition process, see if the characters are going to do that. Bring some sides, have them read them, and see if they have that tendency. And then you can make a decision as to whether you want to pursue your work with that character or not, or that performer or not. Well, I think even the pros do tend to sometimes, and actually it's even the same as true on a movie set. You know, you, they don't read the line exactly the way you wrote it. But my personal take on that is that if it came across great, it might be better to just 
stay with it than to ask for a change because sometimes the change is not going to, it's going to be kind of a Band-Aid is what I'm saying. Yes, and I don't think that's going to be the first time that a producer of a audiovisual work will insist that a change like that stays and override the writer. I don't think it's, uh, you're setting a precedent. Well, and if you got foreign words, you know, certainly you got to listen for pronunciation and uh, names. Uh, yes. You know, proper names, wow. You know, there's always more than one way to pronounce a name. Yes, that's correct. And you use phonetic spelling a lot of times in the script that you derive from your, your literary work. And also, if the producer is out acting as a representative for the author, if the author is not present, that's a judgment call as to if the paraphrase works. Well, I'm intrigued by what you're calling audio adventures, which are audio books styled as radio plays, fully cast with music and effects. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd not, like to be one. That's, well, Renke is kind of going uh, retro with that. It's not a new... Um, phenomenon. It's War of the Worlds. Sorry, wrong number. Yeah, The Shadow, The Green oh, Hornet. Yeah. We want to bring bring the old-fashioned radio shows back, and I think it's fun. And since people, more and more people are community and have the time to to listen, it would. It I think it works with the community. Well, there's an expense involved there, of course. I mean, we have to yeah. be be mindful of that as author, producer, promoter, um, you know, self bankers. Yes, Unless somebody has to write it. Well, now that actually uh, yeah, we'll begins the process. Yes, if you don't, before, uh, if you don't have a book, then it's probably not a good idea to try to produce an audio book before there's mm -hmm. a book. I <laughs> People do, but uh, who listens to that? Well, it's called spoken word. They get up there in front of a mic and they deliver it. There are times like that, and then sometimes those things get transcribed, and that could end up in a book. I don't know, Cheyenne. Do you think like spoken word is scripted a lot? It seems like a lot of the popular spoken word is yeah, scripted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I would say there's definitely a part of it that's not, too. So it just kind of depends and varies. Get Published Radio will be right back after this message. You know, Get Published is all about helping you. Yeah, I mean you get published. And these days, the way to go is self-publishing, where there are no agents or editors or big publishing houses telling you you can't or making you feel like you're not good enough. You know, going back in history, many famous authors were self-publishers. With his own printing press, Benjamin Franklin published Poor Richard's Almanac in 1732, long before he was a famous statesman. That's how we know Ben's sayings, such as, fish and visitors smell in three days. Seriously, if you want to change your life or change the world or both, it's a great time to get in the game. Ebooks are particularly easy. With a click, you can reach a worldwide audience. Did you know that there are more people in China who read English than those of us who use the language in all the rest of the world? So if you've got a story to tell, write that memoir or that novel that's been percolating in your head. And if you're an established professional, or if you have a job you dislike or no job at all, give us that business or technical or even political book that establishes you as an expert who deserves serious attention. Yes, it's easy to get published, but understand you'll need help if you want professional results. Editors and copy editors help you clean up your prose. Book designers make the product eye-catching. And publicists help you be heard above all that social media noise. We have those support resources on our website, getpublishedradio.com. And there we've also got a request for services form, where you can get personal attention for whatever might be keeping you from getting it done. That's why we say GetPublishedRadio.com is your doorway to unlimited self-expression. Hey, it's all about the First Amendment. Use it or lose it. Welcome back to Get Published, where it's, well, all about getting published. William, before the break, you guys told us what's involved in producing one of your audio adventures, and that's how you did the audiobook for I Am Fire and Air. We're eager to hear some of it, but first, why don't you set the stage by telling us about the story? Well, Gerald, it's basically a young adult sci-fi adventure story. The entire story takes place within 16 hours on the 16th birthday, one of the, the heroes. Four young adults, teenagers, have some very unique abilities. Not superhero, but they have some innate potential. For instance, our main hero has suffered a traumatic injury during his lifetime, and he emerged from that 
with the ability to see people's thoughts uh, clustered about them, and he can interpret that. That's an example. Now, these four children are confined to an underground research facility, willingly, uh, run by a subcontractor for the Department of Defense. Uh, at some moment during that 16 hours, the facility is, quote, invaded by some sort of nefarious party. The building's automatic defenses are employed and everyone in the facility is killed except our four heroes. Now, they must escape from this facility battling against the creations that they helped make. And it's an escape from the Minotaur type story. And that, then you have to read the rest of it to find out how it ends. Hmm. I'm thinking this book is a kind of sci-fi Harry Potter, you know, an immersive world. Did you set out thinking your main audience would be young adults? Absolutely. Young adults have the greatest imaginations possible. I can throw just tidbits of ideas out there and they will run with those ideas. It, it's better for them to use their imaginations than for me to explain a lot, actually. When you were writing it, were you keeping in mind kind of the way teens and tweens consume literature nowadays? You know, they might start listening to the audiobook on the smartphone, just get a chapter here and there, stop, hear it at the bus stop, hear it getting a coffee, and kind of in bits and pieces. Were you thinking about that at all? Yes, I was. Because the world is changing we're all technology-based now. Have phone, we'll listen. Start there. This marvelous thing can happen. Not only do they get hooked on the story, they realize they can read a lot faster than a narrator can talk. So they may end up with their nose in a book after all. <laughs> there are some well, statistics that, that back that up as well. Well, enough of this chinwag, guys. Let's hear some of I Am Fire and Air. Tony, uh, set this clip up for us. Okay, it's just uh, some brief segments from the audio materials, enough to get your curiosity engaged. Out of life's school of war, what does not destroy me makes me stronger. Friedrich Nietzsche from Twilight of the Idols. On behalf of the Bowman Sanders Corporation and the staff of Facility Number One, we wish you a very happy 16th birthday, Javon. Young Javon has a unique gift. He can see the thoughts of people and animals arranged about them in pattern of shape and colors that can be interpreted. He calls this ability skimming, even though giving it a name gives him no power over it. And Javon's amber-colored eyes are so unusual. That's why he is an ultra black-red secret at Bowman Sanders Corporation, working for the United States Department of Defense. Don't misunderstand, Dr. Charles. I like working here. I have my own room, food, recreation, entertainment, but everything stays inside around here. There's never any rage or worry. It's hard to release anything. Someday, I just might get stressed, form cracks from the inside out like an egg. A monster will emerge. <laughs> Javon... The human mind so loves monsters, it can't be fully understood without them. In ancient times, 16-year-old boys were sent out alone, armed with only a spear and a knife. They were expected to go on a vision quest to find monsters and vanquish them. How do you feel about that? If the monster lived right in the village, it would be a short quest. There are only four of us kids in facility number one. Me, Anna, Alina, and you, Javon. If circumstances threaten the life of even one of us, we use the code word to permanently activate tribal mode. All out war. We will take this whole place down. And don't think we can't do that. Well, what did the dolphin say? He said there's an attack submarine coming toward us. So, it's just the Navy. It's not the Navy. Intruder alert. Security has been breached. Automatic defenses have now been deployed. The facility will be filled with poison. Follow isolation procedures. This is not a dream. Anna could not move. She simply stared at Dr. Polidori. Poor Dr. Polidori just lay there, dead. Anna slowly rose to all fours and crawled to the chamber door. She put her forehead on the cold glass. Tears streamed. It was real, and it was now, and it was the end. The bastards had killed Dr. Polidori. Then the doctor suddenly moved. Her head twitched and her eyes opened wide. She coughed and spat blood-streaked phlegm. Her hands repeatedly jerked open and closed. Her entire body went into a spasm. 
Dr. Polidori stood straight up. Think carefully. I am Fire and Air, a new young adult science fiction adventure novel by William Anthony. Order it through your local bookstore. A complete audio adventure version of I Am Fire and Air is coming soon. Visit the website at www.iamfireandair.com. Lori, how can our listeners get in touch with Runky? Well, Runky has a website, so you can go to the website, www. Runke, R-U-N-K-E-E, productions.com. Contact us through there. Or you can email us at Runke, that's R-U-N-K-E-E, productions at gmail.com. Get Published Radio will be right back after this message. You know, in all the history of the world, with today's technology, it's never been easier to get published, to self-publish your printed book, e-book, audio book, even multimedia e-book. And not just novels and memoirs or how-to books and histories, although if that's what you've got, let's have it. But also poetry, spoken word, graphic novel, cartoons, children's picture book, interactive video, games, virtual reality, and imaginative mashups of all this stuff. Get into the game. Along the way, you'll no doubt need some professional help from an editor, a book designer, a publicist. But isn't the investment in yourself worth it? How about you take the money you'd spend on your next vacation and get famous instead? GetPublishedRadio.com. That's our support website where we've got links to all the resources you'll need. And don't forget that request for services form if you crave some personal attention. That's GetPublishedRadio.com. Hey, it's all about the First Amendment. You can use it or lose it. You know, Runkey Productions, the audio magicians can take your radio shows, podcasts, audiobooks, and ads from the streets of New York to the outer reaches of the galaxy. I think we need more echo at the end of that. Now look, visit us at R-U-N-K-E-E Productions.com. I still think we need more cowbell. Welcome back to Get Published, where it's, well, all about getting published. Well, Tom, I think you'd be an exception to our rule about authors not recording their own books. I mean, you're already a media personality, and you've got that John Carradine voice, if you don't mind my saying. <laughs> I'm available for audio books and for club gigs and parties, for that matter, but I don't dance. <laughs> You'll occasionally see me on TV playing a butler I look pretty good in a penguin suit. Yeah, you do. I, I would love to hear you read a zombie story, you know, have that creepy kind of vibe to it. It was a dark and stormy night, and I was asleep, and I don't know what happened, so I, I'm not to blame for anything. But they tell me I was walking around anyway, and I guess I was after I was buried. Well, that was probably in your, in, probably in your uh, tales, and... You know, you might have been mistaken for the everything. Dis- all the interesting stuff happened after I was killed. That's... I got onto this radio gig here, doing a thing for a guy named Gerald and uh, Cheyenne. <laughs> wow! So you're actually an ethereal presence. That's right. You're just you're just some ectoplasm with some. You will notice they've been having trouble with the sound. <laughs> <on my head. laughs> it's because of zombie. Time. I have to, uh, yeah, bring a vibe with me that is not pleasant always, but. It made me rich. As, as long as, it was, <laughs> as, long as the aroma went. doesn't come along with it, yeah. I guess we're okay. No, we, well, uh, no, not we, for me anyway. We can't distinguish on the radio. Well, going back to our topic. Um, oh, yes. I'm, I'm actually really surprised that kind of audio dramas haven't made a comeback sooner. It always really interested me as a kid, you know, hearing the original War of the Worlds type thing. It just, it's, it's great that it's coming back now, but... It, why hasn't it come back sooner? Well, what do you think the Keeler's reason for that is? has been doing it for years. It, it, and, you know, Prairie Home Companion, and he's got, you know, the episode of the Guy, Guy Noir and news from Lake Wobegon. And I think that he's he was on to something then, and it seemed very retro. But I think now it, it seems like it's very, very new. I could make a case that it never went away, but it just wasn't broadcast because yeah. when I was 14, I went to summer camp, and I was the designated storyteller. And I would recount all the sci-fi horror stories I had read and tell them at night to the whole cabin. 
This was my business, the first of my performing, and also the last of my performing life. And this, is, and this, this, uh, as this, a result of this, most of the kids in that scout troop had real trouble sleeping. That's which right. they reported to their parents. I was after proud they of got my back. work, but the point is, <laughs> that is broadcasting. That is audio book. That's what it is. That's when people tell stories. That's audio. That's talking. It, it don't necessarily get it down on tape or on a uh, disc or anything. But people do like to talk, and they do sometimes give the floor over to a real blabbermouth who can keep their interest for well, a while. Well, I hear my characters talk, you know, in my head as I write. I think that they come, you know, they eventually kind of come alive. And yeah. I, I mean, I know writers have also, other writers have said that the characters write their own lines, and I, I, I buy that. Here was an evolutionary theory, and I don't know if it holds up, but the belief was that eyesight followed sharp hearing. The sense of eyes follow hearing. You hear before you see, and hearing, I think, still is considered a little bit more seriously important sense than seeing. Movies are seeing. TV is searing, seeing and searing. But <laughs> talking, talking is the ears. The ears came first. And that is one of the advantages of audio books. And you could listen before you could even read, before they even bothered to put stuff on stone tablets or paper. It's always disappointing to me, though, when I, you know, read a book and I have this vision of what a character would look like, what a character sounds oh, like yeah. every time I read one of their lines and then I go see, you know, a movie based on the book and it just doesn't live up they to... They did not cast yeah. Kevin Spacey in that role. <laughs> yes, that yeah. always disappoints me. So it's it's interesting just to see how each person formulates based off of what's written, you know, oh, this person would look like this or sound like this, just to see kind of where the imagination takes you. When Hammer Films did those Dracula Frankenstein things in the 50s. They cast two great actors in opposition to each other, Christopher Lee and uh, what is, come on, his name will come to me in a minute. But what was interesting is that the Peter Cushing, that was his name, he played the good guy in Dracula. There actually was, and he is the first performer who really was an equal, a match for Dracula. And that is why that is, in my opinion, the best Peter Dracula. Cushing, Cushing Peter Cushing the original and, Star and Wars. Christopher yeah. Lee. Everybody that is the that. reason, that is the best Dracula ever done because he was he was so good Bella Lugosi's Dracula there was well Bella Lugosi nobody remembers who the good guy was I mean the book was named after the villain yeah it's your villain is your hero that's step number one when you're going to write a story it nobody cares who Batman is they love the Joker they love the Catwoman. They love these people. That's where it's going to sell your stuff. When they did Dracula, can you tell me who this bearded elderly well, again, fellow Tom, with a weird we have, accent? We have hit on another, yet another book we want you to write. And Laurie is standing here ready to make you an audio book direct from that. And we'll get that out and out to the world I'm if so you self-publish. I just can't seem to shut my mouth. That's so good to hear. And that's our show. You know, Get Published is all about self-publishing and self-expression, and that getting published and the ease of getting published these days is really all about exercising the First Amendment in this free society of ours. You know, what we need these days are more ideas. Even though we're deluged in, with information, we need more good ideas. And we need debate about those ideas. Book-length debate, not just snippets that are posted on social media, not just selfies and cute pictures of your pets, the things that you really think. And remember, because in self-publishing there are no gatekeepers out there, that is the good news and that is the bad news. So hire some good help. Perhaps you found that here. You may find it on the website, whatever you're looking for, whether it's an editor or a book designer or somebody to help you promote. But hire good help, get good advice, and by all means, please get published. The Get Published Radio Show with Gerald Everett Jones is produced by Runky Productions. Music by Jason Shaw at audionautics.com. Our producer is Lori Marple, and your announcer is Bill Navarro. You'll find links to support services on our website, getpublishedradio.com. So whether you're an author, a publisher, or a self-promoter, get help at getpublishedradio.com, and thanks for listening.